Happy New Year, everyone. We're so delighted you joined us for worship at the Dorset Church Coffee Lounge. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. We're selling his albums on the way out. And t-shirts, too. And t-shirts, yeah, too. <laughs> God bless you for coming to worship as your first endeavor of this new year. And let's begin by turning to those sitting nearby and offering the peace and love of the Lord for one good year. So let's all attempt to begin on the same page with the sharing of announcements and uh, once again, we really appreciate all of you who donated poinsettias to beautify our sanctuary through the Advent season and now into the Epiphany season. And you will note the, uh, the donors' names, and let's show our appreciation for them. We also want to appreciate our ushers this morning, Marietta and Carl White and also the deacons who will be serving communion later on, Lynn Welsh, Ellen Leeds, Keith Michael, and Dan Zimmerman. Uh, you will see that we have a slightly different format for worship this day, and so we want to thank in advance some of our scripture readers, uh, Reverend Holly Ross and Peter Davis. And for announcements, the hospitality committee is meeting uh, Monday on the 9th. The stewardship committee is meeting Wednesday the 11th. The community food cupboard needs your help. Dorset Church is responsible for the month of January every year. And so we are out getting volunteers to help provide for the food cupboard. And when you go shopping, Think of our church's commitment to that important ministry. Uh, Jane loves us to know well enough in advance that all the annual reports 
are due on January 16th and hold the date for our annual church meeting on February 12th, right after church. And uh, next Sunday is an important day in our church family uh, year. It is our annual Epiphany party. And Gretchen gre greatly hopes that we're going to have lots of volunteers. And if you would like to help out in some way, uh, call the office or call Gretchen. And um, Bennington County Open Arms, which is kind of the umbrella organization for settling Afghan refugees, is in need of some old used cars, especially for our own church family. And Musa needs a, a car to get to work each day. Uh, so call us or call Emily or uh, Cheryl Gasparetti. Uh, oh, and uh, Faith Inside, which is our winter book study group, will start on Friday the 13th. And our book for this winter is Starry Messenger by Neil deGrasse Tyson. I've been reading it, and it's a very good read, and we'll give us transcendence if any book will. Uh, and the hiking club will be uh, gathering for their next event on January 14th, Saturday at 9 here in the parking lot. And winter community suppers, free community suppers are about to begin. And note the dates and the delicious menus. Are there any other announcements for the good of the body this morning? Paula, and then Linda, I guess. Go uh, ahead. Uh, Gretchen had emailed me over the weekend, and she's so grateful for all, all of you who have supported so far the Epiphany luncheon that's happening next week. However, she still needs a few king cakes, or, um, which if you need the recipe or a recipe, you can find them online. Really, these are very easy to make. And she needs another soup, if possible. Um, and everyone is invited. So volunteers to bake a king cake and another soup. OK. Linda. Um, you probably know this, Jim, but Gary called me yesterday to say that Pam DeBona passed away. Oh. Uh, do we know that for sure? <laughs> well, her daughter called him. Oh, OK. OK. All right. Pam DeBona. We will add her to this year's memorial list. Betty? Okay. So it's true. Okay. Any other announcements? Sad or joyful? Seeing none, dear friends. On this first day of a new year, let us join our hearts, our minds, and our souls as we worship God. Friends, let us call one another to worship. People of the world, it is time to celebrate new beginnings. We step into the new year with faith. People of faith, it is time to look ahead with hope People of hope, it is time to walk in paths of righteousness. We step forward together in love and justice. Friends, let us worship God by opening with the hymn 143, verses 1 and 3, Joy to the world, the Lord is come.
Good morning and Happy New Year. Good morning. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Before we pray, I'm just going to make a mention that this morning we're praying in prayer of invocation. But after last night, maybe we should have prayer, prayed a prayer of confession. <laughs> but let us start the new year together in prayer. Eternal, Eternal God. God. You, you call, call us to adventures of which, which we, we cannot see the ending, ending. by paths not yet trodden, trodden through, through perils unknown. Give, give us faith to go out with courage, courage not knowing where we go, but, but only that your hand is leading us, us and, and your, your love is guiding us. In, in your holy name, name of our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, Christ. Amen. amen. And now, friends, let us join together for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So here at Dorset Church, we have a special ritual for saying farewell to the year that was before we prepare ourselves for the year that is. And we do it with the thread of the tune of Old Lang Syne to pull together our memorial list, our prayer list, and a list of current events that have touched all of our lives. Dottie Streeter, Gail Sherman, Bud Welsh, Fred Diefenbach, Betty Gilbert, Dick Hiddle, Charlotte Lightfoot, Betsy Cochran, Terry Archer, Gene Stannard, Theron Tromley, Muriel Roth, John White, and Pam DeBona. Naomi, 
Reverend Marion Pete McCart, Elizabeth LaBerge, Chase Verkheimer, Johnny D, Darlene Brown, Karen Statler, Nancy, Tom Brass, Eric Stevenson, Carolyn Neal Grote, Kathy Lind, Jim Amadin, Robbie Littlewood, Jack Bertram, Isabella Wasik, Karen Damasio, Pam Lacoste, Theo Cherry, Carl Hedman, Nicole, Bill McFall, Carrie Combline, Larry Cochran, Iris Delilah, Linda and Dick Buswell, the Yusuf family, Wenda Ami, Father Karakin Kasparian, Dottie Thompson, Jacqueline Dennis, Allison, Pastor Felaine, and Deb White. In our Dorset Church, we pray for the cabinet and the nominating committee as they begin to prepare for the 2023 annual meeting. In the Vermont Conference, we pray for our friends at the Shrewsbury Community Church. And in the UCC, our denomination, we pray for all the UCC congregations that are downsizing due to shrinking congregations. May God encourage them to find new ways to be church as they share worship spaces with other denominations. events, both good and bad, that have touched our lives last year. Last January, Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer announced his retirement. Pfizer and Moderna COVID vaccines were approved. 2021 was found to be in the top seven warmest years on record and fossil fuels at a 40-year high. February, Russia invades Ukraine and the United States sends 3,000 troops to Poland, Germany, and Romania. And the men and women's national soccer teams finally got equal pay. In March, Florida passed an anti-LGBTQ identity education bill. Myanmar genocide against Rohingyas was condemned. Solar energy collection around the world first topped one terawatt, which is enough power for all homes in Europe. In April, Twitter agrees to sell to Elon Musk for $44 billion. And the once endangered humpback whale population was now suddenly growing. In May, COVID vaccinations reached 1 billion worldwide. But here in the United States, we mark 1 million COVID deaths. Ten were killed, three were injured in a mass shooting in a Buffalo supermarket. Twenty-one were killed in an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas, and 19 of those were children. In June, the January 6th Insurrection Committee first held TV hearings. 
first major federal gun safety legislation passed in decades. The largest interest rate raised by the Fed since 1994. The Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. Katanji Brown Jackson became the first black woman Supreme Court Justice. In July, a report found that sales of gas-powered cars was now in decline. 49 died from widespread flooding in Kentucky. Boris Johnson stepped down as Prime Minister of the UK. Former Prime Minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, was assassinated during a speech. The world's largest wind farm began off the coast of England with enough power to power half of New York City. In August, millions of veterans who were exposed to toxic burn pits finally got health care benefits by Congress. The FBI searched Mar-a-Lago for stolen classified documents. September, Hurricane Fiona crippled Puerto Rico. Hurricane Ian devastated central Florida. 126 were killed. In the longest reigning monarch in British history, Queen Elizabeth died. In October, talk show host Alex Jones was found guilty of defamation and ordered to pay $965 million in damages. Iran had the largest protests in decades after the death of a girl by morality police. Paul Pelosi was hospitalized after being attacked by a home invader. November. The, Dem the, Dem the Democrats widened the Senate majority. Republicans gained House majority. In November, elections showed that the health of American democracy and voting was healthy. Former President Trump announced running in 2024. Gunmen opened fire on an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs, killing five and injuring 25. The world's largest active volcano, Mauna Loa, erupted after 40 years. And December of last year, the January 6th committee held their final hearing and recommended criminal charges. The United States Department of Energy announced the world's first man-made nuclear fission. Argentina won the World Cup in Qatar. And Pope, former Pope Ratzinger died. up this morning's offering. Let us pause in life's pleasures and 
Friends, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all the blessings in the many ways we receive them, for getting us through the hard times, for helping us to count the abundance that we might enjoy. And so we pray that we might live and give through our spirit of thanksgiving generously, abundantly, to make this world a better place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And so now we welcome in the new year. These woods are lovely, dark, and deep. But I, I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. You know, to me it's always felt as though Frost's poem was a New Year's poem. As we turn the calendar to yet another succeeding year, it can be a time of new beginnings, like the freshness of new fallen snow, the purity of a silent wood. But entering the future can also feel dark and deep. And the question is, how do we make it lovely? At New Year's, many of us muster the courage to make promises of change and to manufacture the hope to keep them. Promises defined by old wounding. Promises to amend worn out ways. 
promises not only for our own little worlds, but to better our whole world, to better the future of all. And so we created this first watch ceremony to remind us of the rich Judeo-Christian legacy that we have of promise and hope. As a people of faith, we believe our best promise is based on the promises of God. And our best hope is renewed through Christ. And so this is one of the earliest promises from God to Noah from Genesis. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelled the pleasing odor, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of humans. For the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth, nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time, harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Let us sing our hymn number 619 verses 1 and 2 my life flows on and we can sing from being seated reading this morning is also from Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your offspring after you. Please join me now in our hymn, number 132, verses one and two, 
when God is a child. And we continue to hear these words of scripture from Genesis. But Hamor spoke with them, saying, The heart of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him in marriage. Make marriages with us. Give your daughters to us. And take our daughters to yourselves. You shall live with us, and the land shall be open to you. Live and trade in it and get property in it. And now we will sing the first three verses of hymn number 73, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. Our fourth reading is from Jeremiah 31. A new covenant. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. 
for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. We will now sing God of our life, number 713, verses 1 and 2. we hear these words from the letter to the Hebrews. When God made a promise to Abraham, because he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently endured, obtained the promise. Humans, of course, swear by someone greater than themselves, and an oath given as confirmation puts an end to all dispute among them. In the same way, when God desired to show even more clearly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it by an oath, so that through two unchangeable things in which it is impossible that God would prove false, we who have taken refuge might be strongly encouraged to seize the hope set before us. We have this hope, a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters the inner shrine behind the curtain where Jesus, a forerunner on our behalf, has entered, having become a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Let us sing hymn number 354, Seek Ye First. from Hebrews, the meaning of faith. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what was seen 
was made from things that are not visible. The example of Jesus. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us now sing hymn number 618, verses 1 and 2, How Firm a Foundation. And our last reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them. They will be God's people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. And also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Shall we stand and sing our next hymn? It is number 67, verse 1. O oh God, our help in ages past. Please be seated, dear friends. And I invite us to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion by finding the order of worship as it is printed in your bulletin. 
But first of all, I want to welcome us all with an invitation to every single one of us gathered here this day, all of us. Whether you're a member of this congregation or not, or this denomination, or even this religion or not, whether you're here this day confident about your relationship with your God, or if you're here filled with wonder and question and doubt, whether we're young or old, we are all God's children, all of us. And we have all been invited with generous words. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Let's begin this sacrament with a unison prayer of confession. Most loving God, we confess that we have seen much pain without being moved to compassion. We have begged forgiveness from others while hoarding our own charity. We've gathered our own tranquility at the expense of peace for others and creation. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us. Amen. And God assures us of our forgiveness. Our God is merciful, slow to anger, and bounteous in love. When we repent of sin and return to God, forgiveness is ours. This is God's promise in Christ. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God praise and thanks. Therefore, with all the communion of saints, we praise. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory. Shall we pray? O God, consecrate this bread and wine that we may feed on things divine. Drink, drink from grapes and food from flour. Fill them with thy holy power. Thus our Lord may present be now and for eternity. Amen. So friends, we are met by the story that gives meaning to this simple and sacred sacrament. It is the story of that Last Supper that Jesus shared with his closest disciples when they were gathered in that upper room on the night before he was crucified. It was on the night that he was betrayed, that he took bread and wine and he offered a blessing. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam and then he took the bread. And he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat this, do so in remembrance of me. And so, ministering to you in Jesus' name, the deacons and I offer you the bread of life. Take and eat. This is Christ's body broken for us. In a similar fashion, Jesus took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of the bread and drink from the cup, we remember Christ's death, but also the new life in Christ's resurrection. 
Ministering to you in Jesus' name, we offer you the cup. Thank you. Please join me now in our prayer of thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we may experience Christ and receive his gift. Strengthen our faith. Increase our love for one another. And let us show forth your praise in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Shall we sing our, the last verse of our closing hymn? O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us today, this year to come, and forevermore. Amen.